Morning everyone. Welcome back to Honeybee Farmstead. I'm Mel. And this is Deirdre, or we call her DD. So if you hear me refer to her as DD on the videos sometimes. We're doing our morning milking. And uh, I've taken to bringing my coffee out with me because there's long periods of time where I'm just sitting here while the milking machine milks the cow. So while I'm waiting for the milk to come out, I handle Valentine or Valley Girl. And I'll get Gracie to take you over to see her chiller now. So you can see Valentine is tied up near her food. We do that every morning so that she gets used to being contained. Yeah. Seriously, Belly. So, how are we all today? These two are playing and fighting over the uh, feed tub. I thought I'd just um, ask a few questions of you guys as well. Uh, I see that we've got some subscribers, which is so great. Uh, I'm wondering if you're liking the content or if there's anything that you would like to see different, anything um, you'd like to see more of. I, I think now you guys know, you know, what we've got on our property. Um, we are thinking of other animals we can add to the collection. I want to get into breeding Nigerian dwarfs, goats that is, in case anyone has been living under a rock, they're all the rage at the moment. But I like that they're small, they're manageable, their milk's apparently the best of the goat lines. So, and we've got a Nigerian dwarf buck, so he, and he's a real sweetheart. So, yeah, just wondering if, um, you know, if there's anything you want to see more of. We're going to be doing a lot of gardening. Uh, we've been working on getting all the stuff that I had from my other property over to here. We did a big load of that yesterday. So yeah, we're going to take you on that journey as well. But please comment below um, with any anything you want to see more of, uh, any hints or tips and tricks for me. That'd be great too.
at this point you're probably thinking I never want to quieten a cow ever uh, but I, I promise you it gets a lot easier and it's so rewarding knowing that everything that that animal is is because you worked with it closely and got it to that point and it'll be super worth it when I'm getting lovely rich creamy milk from her and she's pregnant so we're going to end up with another little calf as well otherwise she would probably just sit around someone's paddock and go to waste uh, which would be quite a shame because jerseys are well worth investing in and i just keep telling myself it'll get easier it will get easier and i know it will and i'll make sure that i keep you all up to date on the progress of Valentine. She's here for a while. So wish me luck, guys, because this is going to keep going until I win. I'm stubborn, more stubborn than her, and I'm determined to make her a beautiful house cow, exactly like Deirdre is, and eventually Clementine will be. Don't run, guys. going to be a process of doing that with her all the time until she's nice and calm. Keep going with the hay. You can see uh, we've got little Miss Luna. Hello, baby goat. Oh, hello. We've got Luna being led around in the paddock by Grace, right near where we've just let Valentine out she's with Clementine. Anything. But it's good because she's actually free to do whatever she wants now. She can wander off, she can do whatever. She hangs with Clementine. And because Clementine is super used to us, super used to Luna. Um, we've had Luna since the start of when we've had Clementine. So she she's getting used to things, um, a lot of different things, really quickly and really easily and almost by, by accident because by pairing her up with Clementine, our most gentle, bomb-proof, little calf we've actually paired her up with someone that she'll learn to trust us a lot quicker than anyone else really so 
Yeah, yeah if you look behind us here. They're just behind us, just chilling. And look where it is. If we're sitting here in the paddock, which is what we're doing, Clementine will end up coming up to us. She loves her pats and cuddles. So when she does, Valley will come up too and she'll just get pats and cuddles. That's her voluntarily coming up too. So that's exactly what we want. That's that's how we want it. So look at this regal mup. <laughs> and we've got her on a, a lead. So she can't just wander off and get bones. Yes, there's one reason. So she can't just wander off and get bones because we've just cleaned all the bones she's brought home off the back of the lawn. But also because we're teaching her as well. We've got to always have, in my opinion, control of the animals that we um, are charged with looking after. So... What's wrong, Deirdre? We're here. Here she comes. This is a little bit of an unfortunate, um, you little regular. the part of her being in milk and having only one in milk is until I can get the little nose clip for Clementine so she can't feed off her mum, poor Deirdre's by herself. Now we always make sure that there's a boundary fence between them so Clementine can still come up and Valentine can still come up and see Deirdre but it's not ideal. They don't like to be alone. Um, they are sharing a fence line, but I'm just waiting on this post. Ever since the world went crazy, the post has been ridiculous. So when I get the little clip, I'll explain a bit more about it and I'll show you guys how it works. So the reality of milking with a machine like I use, uh, there's pros and cons. Uh, we're on rainwater now, so the con definitely for me is it takes a lot more water to wash these. Uh, I give it a good wash with the washing detergent in the sink and then I rinse it because I don't want any washing detergent residue on the inside of my canister. But the pros are that it's closed loop. So once you've cleaned her udder and you know that you've done a really good job, uh, there's no chance of bits of particles of uh, poop or anything like that falling down into your milk because it's all closed with a lid. Um, so I think we've got about three litres today which is really cool. Um, she's a small Jersey Island Jersey so that's actually good. Um, the other thing is I always, like not a lot of people do it, but I always strain it through a really fine um, cloth as well just in case during the cleaning process anything has gotten there or whatever. We just want to be super, super careful with it and do the best that we can. So yeah, it's beautiful. And you saw this morning I took my coffee out there, full cream milk. Um, I don't take the cream off at the moment. I'm waiting to get a cream separator. You can do it other ways. We did get, hang on, I'll show you. We did get a, um, one of these turkey bases. And I have sucked cream off the top of the milk because when you are finished pouring it, the cream will separate. So we get to it from about there to the top with cream and you can separate it off like that. It's a bit of a tedious process, but if you need cream, that's definitely how you do it. Making butter and things like that. Well, I haven't bothered yet. Um, I am gonna get into that, but I would prefer to get a cream separator, and I think I'll do it. Um, I've heard that there's no point cream separating unless you're separating large quantities of milk. So three liters is not really worth doing. But when Bally has her baby and we're collecting her milk, I will be making butter and yogurt and all those cool things. So yeah, can't wait to show you guys that.
so it's dark now because it's winter and it's only six o'clock but it's gotten dark i wanted to show you guys the final process i've got an ice cream bean here next to me that i planted because it's a nitrogen fixer and eventually we can use it for chop and drop i've got it in a nice clear spot outside that it can grow very large if it wants to because they do grow quite large if you let them and um, i've mulched it with pea hay and we've also put a heap of cow poo and other hay around which we noticed did really well when we had it at the other property so here and now Alex is going to water them in we've gone down to get um, dam water to water them in because the pH and alkalinity and all that is perfect in the dam water uh, the bore is a little bit acidic and a little bit salty so we want them to have the best start come with me do you need the torch honey yes, please. all right Gracie go help daddy you might be able to still see me a little bit anyway so over here i'm going to turn the torch around i've got two key apples k-e-i key apples they're not a very common plant here but i grew them from seed that i got from a local seed place um and yes yeah, so i've got i think i've got three of them but i've only got two here so you see here you ran out of fuel for the for the tank oh mommy it's right up this stem. that's okay so yeah good girl we don't want the um, pea hay right up to the to the stem because it can actually encourage rot. And if you have a look, the tree got a little bit a little bit unhappy, but it's still doing really well. Now these key apples grow massive um, and they produce a really astringent fruit, so we can use them for lots of different things. But apparently they're loaded with nutrient and. So this one here has gone into this spot because when we were digging the hole, Alex noticed that there's quite a bit of rock underneath. Um, so we know that there's a lot of soil as well. We hope that the root system will weave its way between the rock and it won't be a drama. We'll go over to the other one. This one has a really beautiful, rich, rich ground. So this is a key apple as well. It's a lot healthier. So we, we've put that in this hole that we know this one will survive. Um, they're not frost uh, intolerant either they'll they'll handle the frost so we're not having to put a tree surround around this one however a couple of the others that we're going to plant soon we will so yeah I'm just going to finish off these last two key apples with some cow poop and hay we'll go down to the pomelo here so we can show everyone the pomelo down here pomelo's down the bottom here darling awesome so this one here is the pomelo you can see it's still green and it's still living but it did get a little bit all the leaves got a bit whipped about in the trailer on the trip here they're a heavy feeder being a citrus and they produce a massive massive fruit like huge so they are a heavy feeder um, and they need it hopefully this one recovers beautifully and just takes off i grew this one from seed as well um, and i've put a like a whole heap of cow poo and um, hay here because I know that they really enjoy that they, they're a heavy feeder and just over here is the guava that you saw me planting earlier as well and I'll kick all this poop back in the hole get it all nice and close but not right near the, the stem that's okay yeah I'll um, I think it got blown in there when it was getting watered but yeah so we'll keep you go um, up to date on the progress a little bit of dry here but i know that these are quite a hearty plant this has got a nice loose soil um, hole that it's going into so yeah i think it'll do really well and the fruit off it is just beautiful and this is the start of our food forest turn the torch back on exciting times um we will do some more tomorrow so i'm not going to end the video here uh, we'll plant some more out tomorrow with the dingo. I love having this attachment, just pops holes everywhere. Um, we'll, we'll prepare some ground in that and we'll get our trees in the ground because they really need it. And anything that's frost intolerant, we'll just put a tree surround around and we've got an avocado and a couple of mangoes to go in. So yeah, I'll do this one tomorrow with you guys. So here we just sped it up, but check out that sunset. 
beautiful red sky so we watered and got everything settled in that that night and then we went back down to the dam and filled up the tanker so that I can keep watering them while Alex is away here he's just watering some of the beds because the dam water is actually cleaner uh, not just cleaner uh, the pH is right this section got planted by Alex a few weeks back and I didn't get to document it because he did it without me knowing but the back line that he's watering now is purple garlic that we got from the shop that sprouted so we thought we'd plant and then halfway along there's a concrete marker that you'll see where the torch is right about now and on the right hand side of that concrete marker is Egyptian walking onions so when they get cranking I'll be able to spread them around the garden bed area and that sort of thing. Alex wanted to trial it in ground and I think it's a really good idea. We want to grow a lot of our stuff in ground at this property but yeah trialing it when there's not much to lose is a good idea. I know I said I wasn't going to end the video now and that we'll do some more tomorrow but during editing I noticed the video was getting a bit long so we're going to save it for tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a giant thumbs up Share with your friends, comment below of anything you think that I might like to know and make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great day and bye for now. Grandpa feed her, give them water every day.